TV 18, celebrating 15 years of leadership. You know, speaking of change, and as you said, you know, it's a very, very dynamic environment that you deal with. I'm sure the plan has gone through several iterations so far. Mm -hmm. What is the latest now in terms of the number of flights that you will operate on a weekly basis, the number of cities that you're going to reach out to? Does it continue to be nine cities that you will start with, the fleet size? Does it continue to be 20 at the end of year four or year five? Uh, has the plan changed? The plan, even after we launch, will keep changing. You know, it's always subject to change because there are new considerations, there are new uh, market forces that come into play. So whatever that we plan, we must always have the discipline to mm -hmm. review whether it is still relevant, you know, in the next three months, six months and nine months. Yes, I think you probably were privy to our initial plan nine months ago. Yeah. It was out in the press, yeah. right? I can tell you some of the, the, the routes are being considered uh, for changes. I, I understand that, but still, if you were to give me a ballpark estimation of year one, mm. uh, the, the size of the fleet, given the fact that you've already made changes from uh, what was envisaged nine months ago as yes. far as your routes as well as your fleet size was concerned. So year one, routes, flights, what can we expect? We are going to have uh, um, five aircraft by the end of the year. And based on the you know, five uh, aircraft fleet plan, we are going to operate to uh, destinations where there's demand for full service. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will be a I would imagine that's largely going to be the metros. Not really. No? I mean, if you look hard enough, there are also non metros that has uh, mushroom and uh, grown in, in potential over the years. Speaking of route planning and uh, allocating what is the best as far as the airline is concerned. I understand that you are also looking at sweating assets, both the fleet as well as personnel. So what, sweating assets. Yes, okay. in a sense, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, going to, it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, significantly reduced turnaround times, I'm given to understand. What should we really expect in terms of utilization you know, earlier, of assets and people? This is about uh, <clears throat> what you call asset productivity. Yeah which is key. It's not just human resource, it's not just uh, aircraft resource, it's not just equipment resource. You know, in a uh, challenging market like India, mm -hmm. there must be a discipline to ensure, sure. you know, the assets are maximized, mm -hmm. utilized to the maximum uh, capacity that it can, can run. So we will be looking at how we can, uh, you know, uh, keep increasing the productivity assets that we have, you know, uh, whether it's the aircraft turnaround time, whether it's in the area of a uh, human resource, mm. everything. So I, I'm blessed I've got a very good team. Mm. Um, we are a lean uh, team right now and we will we'll be lean going forward and we are multitasking. We are multitasking and uh, the, the, the reason why we are able to multitask because we chose the best from the industry and mm. it comes with varied skills. So mm. we don't just have a small function for someone. They are able to multitask and yeah. they have been excellent because without them I wouldn't even dream of being where we are right now yeah. just waiting for the final hurdle to be cleared yeah. in such a short time. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure you've assessed what the competition is doing at, in India at this point in time. You've only got one full service carrier in that sense to contend with, which is, which is Jet, but you've got to treat the low cost carriers as competition also. What's your own assessment of, of what the competition is doing right? What are the vulnerabilities that you can perhaps uh, zero in on? You know, um, <clears throat> each airline today is doing things for for specific reasons, mm. uh, um, we we are open to competition. You know, uh, my background I've been with SIA all this while, yeah. and in the four overseas markets that I was posted to, competition is is keen. In fact, some of them are even keener than India. Mm. And we welcome competition. And in fact, we 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 like competition because at the end of the day, we like to see the the benefits of a competition flowing to the customer mm. itself. Uh, it keeps us on the toe, mm. right? So um, I wouldn't want to comment so much about the vulnerabilities and uh, what they are doing, whether they are doing right or wrong. But you know, I like to focus on what Vistara will be doing. Mm. So we will be providing value for money, uh, product and services that will leave behind a lasting, memorable, positive experience with the traveler. The first day they come on board, they're going to get that memorable experience for them to want to keep 
mm. coming back over and over again to travel with us. You know, I'm sorry to labor on this issue, but everybody says that, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, and, and you're right uh, that perhaps we shouldn't focus on the competition's vulnerabilities or strengths, but perhaps we should focus on the points of differentiation as far as Vistara is concerned. Very simply, the three points of difference. And, and you know, uh, yes, we all expect the best in terms of customer delivery and customer experience and so on and so forth. But three points, both from a front-end perspective and a back-end perspective, as the key points of differentiation. I just have one line. Yeah. At the end of the day, when they travel with Vistara, they're going to feel they have received a personal and seamless experience, mm. thoughtfully delivered. Mm. And let the passengers be the judge at the end of the day, whether we have provided the market and them mm. with a differentiated product and service. On a lighter Whereas. note, have you been testing the competition yourself? What have you been flying <laughs> uh, these days? <laughs> you know, I, I told you I've been here since 1st December. Yeah, so it's been, been a year. I've been traveling a lot. Yeah. yeah so have you traveling. scoped out all the competition? Yeah, I, mean, I travel on all the, uh, the Indian airlines. Which is, your, which is your preferred Indian airline? Vistara. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good good answer. But Peter, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, you know, in terms of regulation, and, and you said that this is a pro-business uh, government, uh, the economy is expected to pick up and so on and so forth. But as far as specifically uh, regulations for the civil aviation sector is concerned, there continues to be back and forth on 520, whether it's going to stay, it's going to go. The latest we hear is it's likely to go. We don't know when. But as and when the government were to decide to do away with 520, uh, when do you believe you will be ready to, to go international from India? You know, uh, based on the uh, <coughs> uh, the reports and the uh, position taken uh, by the government on the subject of 520, I think the writing is on the wall. We we welcome the change, the the repeal of this uh, um, rule that has so far been penalising the Indian carrier. There's no such rule that uh, prohibits the foreign carriers from operating into India. Um, as and when, and we like to see that this uh, 520 rule gets repealed very soon. And we ha we have overseas ambition. Mm. Yes, of course, uh, when we first set foot into India, we know there's a 520 rule. So our operation, our structure, our plan has all been geared up to operate the domestic operations for the next five years. Mm. But as and when the 520 rule goes away, right, we will look into it, operating into uh, on the international sectors. How hard has it been driving a bargain with aircraft manufacturers? Your competition has managed to do a good job of it in, in India. Uh, you know, and there's a, there's a lot of talk on how much of the profit is actually linked to sale and leaseback arrangements. So, uh, you know, how hard a bargain have you been able to drive? I like to believe that I've driven a bargain as hard as my competitor, if not better. <laughs> yeah. Simply because, you know, we are not just another airline. We are Vistara, born out of two iconic brands. We are here for the long haul. This is a brand everyone has been looking forward to. It's a brand that will stay. It's a brand that will be enduring. Everyone, every partner would like to do, do business with us. As I uh, said it before and I said it again, you know, if not for the good support, not just of my excellent team that mm -hmm. I have with me, I'm blessed to have such a great team working with me, but also the support is coming around from the various parties, whether it's the aircraft manufacturer, manu manufacturer whether it's the aircraft lessors, whether it's the GDSs, whether it is uh, the system provider, right. whether it's the government. We have got tremendous goodwill from day one because everyone would like to see the success of this Vistara brand in India and in the world. So we get good offers. Uh, so I like to believe that I struck as hard if not better bargain than my competitor. Well, Peter, thank you very much for joining us. We wish you the very best of luck for Vistara and we hope that you are airborne very soon and we get to experience what you've promised us here today. But thank you very much for speaking Vistara. to us and wish you the very thank best you, of Shireen. luck. Thank you, Thank you. Well, on that note, it is time for us to wrap up the CNBC TV 18 special. We'll see you again. Till then, from the entire team, goodbye and many thanks for watching. CNBC TV 18, celebrating 15 years of leadership.